I've got a bit of a whopper. <laughs> so, this is what I'll be painting next. It's, it's almost as big as me, <laughs> especially if I sit back. Um, right, I'm going to be getting some paper to protect these hard back covers and then I'll be sanding the edges once it's been clamped. Step two is clamp, step three is to sand the edges. This process is very similar to wrapping a Christmas or a birthday present. You just fold the paper around the edges of the heart back so that the paint doesn't stick to it uh, when you start painting your picture. So the next step is to clamp the book. Basically just get some wood planks that are long enough to cover the book. Mine are literally only just long enough. That's the only book that I've ever had that um, problem. <laughs> So you put one either side of the edge of the book. You don't have to do it this way. It's just I haven't got a book press yet. But I was thinking I was going to buy one. And then it's basically just this with like a carriage bolt either end. So I thought I could probably just make myself one. And then I got carried away and came up with... A wonderful idea to make myself one and then carve some nice details into the wood at the top maybe engrave my name like you know i can't just stop at this <laughs> um right and then you get some clamps these are f clamps but you can get like is it c or g i'm not sure but the ones that are kind of more rounded um like they just clump i don't know these are the ones I've got anyway. Clamp either side and the wood between the book and the clamp stops from having any, <laughs> I'll just talk to you through here, um, having any kind of pressure marks because it, it, it distributes the weight evenly or the pressure evenly. You want to tighten it up so that you can feel the resistance. It's got, you know, some grip on it. I wouldn't do it like, you know, ridiculously tight because there is on some smaller books not probably with this one but with hardback books there is a bit of a risk of kind of cracking the spine or damaging it if you do it too tight let me show you how it looks with it, doing it with clamps as well you kind of get it sets you up to paint quite nicely because it's angled towards you obviously when i turn it around um which is quite useful um but you can also prop it up like that, um, which I probably will be because I'm planning on doing a portrait of Sherlock. So it will probably be easier for me to paint it with it set up like this. I look quite piggy there, don't I? <laughs> We're onto the sanding now. So this is the first, um, I'm not sure what grit this is to be honest, but it, it, it's fine, but it's like the more coarse end of fine, if that makes sense. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, this is my workout. So yeah, just following the pages down, swiping in the downwards motion. Don't go side to side because that will probably damage the pages a little bit. Now my dog's having a drink if, if you can hear the slurping. <laughs> then I'll have my finger in the air like posh lady having tea. I actually do that a lot. I don't do it on purpose. <laughs> You'll get dust coming off from the pages. So I mean, you could probably do with a bigger brush for this book, but I just use a fluffy brush to dust off the excess. Can you see that? You can try and buff it a little bit just to make sure that you get it out of any little crevices. There shouldn't really be any because you've sanded it off, but oh God, <coughs> maybe wear a mask. It's not that bad, I'm being dramatic. This is some slightly finer sandpaper. Shh. I don't know what grit it is. Again, if you were coming for accurate details, you came to the wrong place. But I can tell you it was <laughs> made in Finland. Um, I found this at my granddad's house and he said, yeah, you can have it. So, um, yeah. So next I'll just go in and sand this. Same way we did before. 
It's a really nice smooth bass now. Oh, I sound like, um, I forgot his name, buttery biscuit bass. <laughs> what is his name? I'm just gonna Google it. Yeah, Greg Wallace. That's what I sound like. <laughs> I forgot all about filming a transition between me talking on how to set up the fore edge and me actually painting. So here's some footage of me painting. Using my reference images, I start blocking out the light and shade of the face, so the cheekbones, the eyebrows, and the chin, until I feel like the face is starting to take shape. Next, I start working on blending the highlights and the shade together with just like a mid-tone color. And, and I just keep working at this until I think it looks like my reference image. I would recommend using quite light layers of paint because it's quite hard to undo any mistakes that you might make if the layers are too thick and unfortunately we can't use Control Z. <laughs> I've skipped some film in here because it's quite hard to get in and see the details because they are really tiny so um, all I've done is blocked out the hair, done the eyes and just kind of fine-tuned around the mouth and the nose and any creases around the eyebrows. Here I'm just starting to paint the clothes, it's the same as the face, I start off with the light and shade and then just blend the pieces together. I just keep building up the paint until it looks like my reference image. Only adding pure black when I'm happy with the mid-tones and the highlights. Sherlock's woolen coat has quite a lot of colour variation in it, so I tried to add dark grey and light grey dots all over to emulate the kind of effect. I wasn't really liking it at this point, so I tried quite a lot of adding it in, taking it back out, blending it with my finger, and eventually ended up with something that I was fairly happy with. Here I'm darkening up the shadows of the hair a little bit and adding some density to the sides. I also go in with some light grey to show the light shining on the back of the hair. So now I'm starting out on Moriarty and um, I did end up missing out a little bit of recording on the shirt but here I am again blocking out the face using the light and shade following my reference image. I started mapping out the hair quite early on this one because his face shades are quite similar to the background so I just didn't want them to kind of merge together and I think it helps with the overall composition of the image as well. I painted the eyes quite early in this one as well. Does anyone do this when they paint? Like if you paint the nose it's like they can smile now and now he can see. <laughs> I always do that. Is that just me? Okay. Here's an interesting filming angle from me but uh, it avoids getting my nose in the way most of the time so there you go. The lighting in the reference image that I used for this was a lot less dramatic than for the Sherlock one, so I'm just really gradually building up any of the shadows. Here I'm just doing the mid-tones on the hair and then blending it into the background because it's a similar colour and there's a bit of a halo effect going on, so I wanted to get rid of that. Here I'm adding black to the hair to add more density and also I'm starting from the scalp and then also adding it around the back of the hair which helps create that 3D effect. I've finished off the finer details of his face and then moved on to the jacket. Same as always, starting out by blocking out the light and shade, um, not going too heavy handed with this and making sure it's light layers so that you don't do any unfixable mistakes. You can see here I really go in quite a few times with the light and shade just to get it how I want it and then I only go with black at the end when I'm happy with the rest of the shading. In the middle of the two portraits, I wanted to do a quote from the TV series. There were so many good ones to pick from, but I ended up going with, did you miss me? From um, Moriarty, when his face reappears on all the screens, even after he's dead. I decided I wanted to do like a poison pen letter with the newspaper clippings of each letter. So I just marked out each letter with a square. And then I got these really cool little stamps from a shop called So Stream Green, which worked perfectly because I've got both upper and lower case. And I think it gives that newspaper print effect. 
Now I'm just finishing off the black background and then you just need to set it with a fixative spray and then the painting's finished. <laughs> 